There are so many different ways to make money as an illustrator. One of these might just be the perfect fit for you. Hello everyone. Welcome to our business with Ness. I'm Ness and I'm a professional illustrator. So I won't lie, it is difficult to make a living as an illustrator. The level is very high in the professional art world and it is very competitive. But on the other hand, there are more opportunities than ever for up and coming illustrators and more ways than ever to make money with your art. In this video, we will discuss 16 different ways to make money with your art. Some of these you might already be familiar with, but I'll try to add some tips to each and every one of them to make it worth your while. And there might be some methods that you've never heard of before or never considered for yourself before. So right before we jump into it, if you're new here and you would like to see more videos like this, then don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that little bell for notifications. Without any further ado, method number one, portraits. Let's start with something basic, portraits. This is a product that you sell directly to the customer. There's no in-between company and there are many different types. There are realistic portraits, pet portraits, couple portraits. But the biggest thing to remember is who is your customer and why are they buying a portrait? Because no one just buys a portrait from themselves to hang on their wall. <laughs> no one does that. It will usually be a gift for a special occasion. For example, to think outside the box, maybe you can do memorial portraits and you can partner with your local funeral homes to offer the service to families. Or if your thing is pet portraits, you could advertise this service at your local vet, your local pet shop or online Facebook groups. So basically, don't just say on Instagram, I offer portraits and let people try to decipher how that could maybe be helpful for them really spell it out exactly in what context that could be applied to them and then go out there and find people who are actually experiencing that exact context so you can offer your service when it's right on time. Number two, in-house artist. Many companies actually need so much art so regularly that they hire artists full time. We usually call that an in-house artist or maybe a studio artist. I was one myself. I started my career as a 2D illustrator and animator at a mobile game studio. But companies like animation studios or game studios, they don't just need animators. They need a ton of different artists for background design, character design, prop design, colors. Even companies that make things like greeting cards or home decor products or apparel will often hire in-house artists if they're big enough companies that they need that much art. One example is uh, Elizabeth Silver, a fellow YouTuber. She was an in-house artist for years for Gap. So the upside of being an in-house artist is, of course, it's more stable. You have a stable paycheck. You know exactly how you're going to make in that year. However, when you're self-employed, yes, it is unstable. But if you do it well, you actually can make more money. When I was a studio artist, I was making around 50K a year. But now I can make 100K on a good year. However, on the other hand, there are many self-employed artists who don't make enough to earn a living. So it's really a risk. Also, although some of these jobs may be remote, a lot of them still actually ask you that you be on site. So you are dependent on, you know, if you have some of these studios nearby to where you are or be willing to relocate. I actually can't work at a studio anymore because I live in small town Ontario now. It's a good thing that I'm self-employed now. Method number three originals and prints. This is one of the obvious ones, but this is still a great method to make money with your art. Originals in particular, if you are a traditional artist, a traditional painter, those are luxury items that can go for a lot more money than a print or a digital art. We're talking thousands and thousands of dollars. And there are many ways to sell originals such as galleries, art shows, and social media. Many fine artists nowadays don't even have to work through galleries and they are making a killing selling their originals through Instagram. One such example is Thalia Stanton. She is amazing and her marketing game is impeccable. She's doing an absolute killing on Instagram. I highly recommend checking out on Instagram. It is by itself a masterclass in how you can sell your art online. 
If you do originals, you can also sell prints of your artwork at a lower price point. And this way you can get more money out of each and every art piece. So this is a very smart way to go. However, you don't want to dilute the success of your originals. I know a lot of artists that have had great success making limited edition print runs. So they're not available all the time. A great example is Audrey Kawasaki. She recently released a print run of Akaku, one of her paintings. She always drives a huge frenzy because she doesn't do these very often. So when she has a release of one of her prints, people just jump on it before it's sold out. This is a great way to sell your art. Method number four, online shop. Of course, it's not just original paintings that you can sell. There are a whole lot of products that you can create with your art on it, like t-shirt, mugs, tote bags, stickers, bookmarks, etc. And in order to sell those, you can either make them all by hand yourself in your own studio, or you can find a manufacturer to make them for you. With a manufacturer, the profit margin is usually higher. So that's interesting. However, you usually have to order in bulk. So it's a big initial investment. But manufacturers can also handle more complicated items such as enamel pins, so that's cool. With handmade items, it will take you a lot of time to create each and every order, so you have to factor that into the price. Handmade items cannot compete on price, so don't even try it, <laughs> but they can compete on quality and uniqueness. Now with the prevalence of AI art everywhere, which is super cheap and disappointing, I actually anticipate that there will be the rise of a counter movement of people who really put a lot of importance and value on handmade unique items. So this might be actually a great time to get into, you know, artisanal, handmade, handcrafted things. There are loads of artist-owned shops that are very successful and very inspiring. A few examples include Catnip, Coconatasha, and Gingerbread. Method number five, digital downloads. I have had several Etsy shops in the past and out of everything that I've tried, my very favorite thing to sell are digital downloads. The product is just a download, which means that it's immediately available to the customer right after the purchase. There is nothing else that the seller has to do to fulfill that order. Once they buy, it's over. And that is really great. Because when I had a physical product shop, I hated sometimes when I had an order come in and I had to drop everything else to fulfill that order. With digital downloads, that is not an issue. You create the product once, you list it in your shop, and then you can sell it and you don't have to do anything else. Digital downloads include everything printable, like printable wall art, printable coloring pages, printable invites, etc. It also includes everything digital, like digital planners, digital planner stickers, Procreate brushes, clip art, etc. Creating a digital product is always a great use of time because it's basically like creating an asset that then you can keep selling for years and years to come. Not to say that it's not a lot of work because you have to keep creating those assets and market them a lot in order to be a success. Digital downloads are quite saturated because it's such a nice way to make money that everyone wants to jump on it. So while this business model is really clever and really, really nice, it is also going to take some aggressive marketing to get it to work. But you are capable of that. Although the price tag for digital downloads is typically a lot lower than physical products, so you have to sell them in bulk in order to make a significant amount of money from those products. Number six, craft shows. Showing your art and products in person is a great way to sell it, especially when it comes to handcrafted things. People love to be able to see them in person, pick them up, fill them. They also love to meet you, the artist. It's much more personal and it's proven than an in-person face-to-face connection leads to sales more often than an online connection does. In most cities and even small towns, there are a number of craft fairs, conventions, trade shows, farmer's markets, or even festivals. I live in a very small town of only 14,000 people, but even here there are some summer festivals and we have a farmer's market as well that has several crafters selling there. The kind of customer that loves to buy handmade art is also the same kind of customer that loves to support local artists and meet them in person. Selling online also means that your products are right next to all of the other products. You have to deal with all the competition. 
but at a craft show, you only have a handful of competitors to go against. However, it's very possible to sell both online and at craft shows. You don't have to pick one, you can have the best of both worlds. Number seven, live painting. This is a really fun and unique one. Some people will hire an artist to paint something live during an event or party, such as a wedding, an anniversary, a bar mitzvah, etc. Most often it's for weddings. It's really a wonderful concept when you think about it. The couple gets this beautiful original painting to mark the occasion and the artist is painting live. So it's also providing entertainment for the guests at the wedding. I actually have a student in my Instagram for artists class who uh, makes live wedding portraits. And I think it's such a unique and interesting way to make money with your art. If this is something that you are interested in, the first thing I would recommend is to partner up with some local wedding planners, work out something with them so they can recommend you to their clients. Number eight, art classes. Making actual art isn't the only way that you can monetize your skills. You can also teach others what you've learned along the way. Art classes can be either online or in person, and they can be for any level that you're comfortable teaching at. It could be extremely advanced niche Photoshop tricks, or it could be beginner level watercolor lessons. It could be holding summer workshop for kids, uh, teaching the basics of drawing. Many artists don't feel like they know enough to be good enough to teach others, but if you're only two steps ahead of someone, you can turn back around and help them to be where you are. In my town, for example, there are very beginner level painting workshops that are offered at the library and they're very fun and very popular. People love them, even though even the teacher isn't at a professional level, but who cares? It's just teaching the basics of painting so people can have a good time. It's a great way to make a little bit of extra cash and you can either do in person or you can do online classes if you're more comfortable with that that's what i do there are teaching platforms like skillshare that you can teach on or you can host the classes on your own website like i do for example i have a class teaching picture book illustration skills and i have a new one teaching surface design skills i will leave the links in the description below teaching is not a good fit for everyone it does take a lot of time and effort to do but if it is a good fit for you, that's a great way to make money while also helping others. Number nine, character commissions. Original characters are another very popular type of commission to offer. It's very highly requested by people like authors or dungeon and dragon players. However, just letting you know, character commissions are very, very competitive because there are so many artists that do offer them. That's not to say it's impossible, but if you want to offer that kind of commission, you do have to make it a very specific offer. You have to define your target customer very carefully so that you can craft your offer for them and so that you can articulate properly why you are the best choice for them. You have to compete with so many other artists, so you have to explain properly why you are the expert for their exact needs and why they should go with you and not with someone else. That is how you stand out. Unfortunately, the days of the I can draw anything type commission, that really is over. It doesn't work anymore. When you offer commissions like that, you give your customers all the work of figuring out what they want, what they need, how they need it, and how to explain it to you. In order to get commissions now, you have to create an offer that's very specific, unique, and meets a specific need. That is how you win people over. Number 10, print on demand products. It used to be that if you wanted to offer a product, you either had to make it yourself or find a manufacturer and order it in bulk, making a huge uh, initial investment. And that always used to carry a big risk, but print on demand changed that. You can list your artwork on a platform like Society6, Redbubble, or Spoonflower, and then people can buy the product there. And when you get an order, the company creates it and sends it to the customer without you having to do anything. And you don't have to buy an inventory before that. They make the products to order when you actually get a purchase. So this is much less risky. It sounds amazing and it kind of is, but there are downsides to it. First of all, the platform itself offers a big service and they do most of the work. So they do take a big cut. 
that means that your profit margin is going to be much, much lower than if you were to go through a manufacturer. You only get a few cents or sometimes a few dollars for each purchase. So you do have to make a lot of purchases so that you can make a significant amount of money from that. It's also very competitive because it's such a great idea and the barrier to entry is very low. So everyone and their grandmother is on there trying to sell products. However, I don't want to discourage you. If this is your thing, it's still very possible to make a great living on such platforms as long as you do your research and put in the marketing effort. Number 11, freelance illustration. Freelance illustration is when you get hired by a company to work on a project on a contractual basic. So basically just this once or a few times if you're lucky, but basically you get the contract, you make the thing, and then you move on to the next client and the next project. This is a lot less stable than in-house employment, but you do have a lot more variety and um, a lot more control. So it can be cool. When I left my studio job in Montreal, I started freelancing in the picture book market and I did that for several years. So I actually have a lot of experience in freelance illustration. I have a ton of videos on this channel explaining all the ins and outs of freelance. But to summarize, the best way to get work in freelance illustration is to put together a great specialized portfolio and then send that portfolio by email to a ton of companies and art directors. It's not complicated, but it does take a lot of persistence. But I invite you to check out my whole art career playlist for more tips. I will leave the link to that in the description below. Number 12, self-publishing. Of course, you can work with traditional publishers as a freelance illustrator to get books published, but that is not the only way to make books. So if you are tired of waiting for publishers to finally give you your first chance, Nothing stops you from just creating your own book and publishing it yourself. Self-publishing used to be a whole thing, but nowadays with things like Amazon KDP, it's so easy to self-publish your book and list it right on Amazon. And it's a print on demand system. So Amazon will print your book and send it on its way to your customer whenever you make an order. So you don't have to purchase 10,000 books <laughs> from your printer anymore and store them in your garage like how we used to have to do. And picture books actually aren't the only thing that you can self-publish. There are so many other possibilities. You can create non-fiction books, you can create coloring books, diaries and journals, activity books, planners, loads of possibilities. Number 13, wholesaling. Wholesaling means selling your products in bulk to shops so then they can offer it to their clients in their store. Usually you sell them the product at a lower price so that then they can make a profit selling it at retail price. However, the good thing is that usually these are bulk orders. They're, they can get hundreds and hundreds of things at one time so they can put it in their shop. So this is a huge chunk of cash at one time. So if you're already creating products either for a craft fair or for your online shop, wholesaling could be a great fit for you that could be a good next step in your business to scale it up. It's a great way to make more sales and it's actually super easy to get started. You just have to have a way to present all of the products that you have available. So you can make a sheet or a little document of all of your best sellers with all the price listed, kind of like a little catalog. And you can show that to your local shops or any shops that you want to contact and then they can decide if they want to get you an order. If you already have products, this is something that you can get started this week if you want. Number 14, licensing. I mentioned earlier that I did freelance illustration for many years and technically I still do, but now that I work in surface design, most of my money is made from licensing my art. And licensing basically means renting out the commercial rights to your artwork to different companies so then they can take it and create products. Sometimes it's made custom just for that company, but most of the time the artist actually makes the art first and then they shop it around to multiple different companies. This works out great for everyone. The companies can pick and choose which ones they want and they know exactly what they're going to get because it's already made. For the artist, it's 
great freedom. You can create whatever you like. And the great thing about licensing is if you play your cards right, you can license the same piece of art in, for multiple different companies in multiple different markets. So you can double or triple it. For a fee, those companies can use your artwork, but only for a limited time and under very specific conditions that are all outlined in the contract. I have licensed art for greeting cards, scrapbook kits, gift bags, wrapping paper, apparel, fabrics, and more. My clients include companies like American Greetings, Hobby Lobby, TJ Maxx, Design Design, RSVP, and more. It's a very exciting market and very, very fun to work in because you only have to worry about the art. The company that purchases it is the one that has to worry about making their product, manufacturing it, distributing it, and all of that stuff. So you get to have your art on products without actually having to make the products. It's awesome. However, I won't lie, it is a very competitive market. Every artist and their grandmother wants to work in licensing, so it can be difficult to get started. If licensing interests you, I highly recommend my new surface design class because it will teach you exactly how to make very marketable art that stands out for art directors. Number 15, affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing is when you promote or talk about a product that you didn't create yourself, but if someone does buy it on your recommendation, you get a commission from that sale. As artists, there are actually multiple opportunities for us to recommend products in a very natural and organic way. Because I don't know for you, but I'm constantly asked about what materials and equipment I use. So it's very natural for me to be like, oh, I use this, I use that, those are my brushes, this is my thing. If you're recommending those materials all the time anyway, you might as well make a little money from it. It won't make you rich, but it's a nice little side income for very little effort. I have a whole video about affiliate marketing, so if that's something that interests you, I'm going to link it on the screen and in the description below as well. And number 16, Patreon. Lastly, number 16, we have Patreon. The Patreon platform came out several years ago as a way to support your favorite creators. In effect, it's a membership model. So for as little as $5, $10 a month, you can send that amount of money to your favorite creators every single month in order for some perks. For that creator, that creates a stable income that they can count on. So it is great. I've personally been a big fan as a customer for many years. There are many artists that I've supported on Patreon, but you can create your own Patreon and get paid if you like this way. Some perks that you can offer to your patrons are things like behind the scenes, process videos, advice, hangouts, sketchbook tours, or even monthly products. So like if you make, say, digital stickers, it could be every single month there's a pack of digital stickers. Or even physical products like the enamel pin club, you get a new enamel pin every single month or something like that. There's a lot that you could do if you start thinking about it. Everything that you offer there could be exclusive products. So, you know, you can't get it in the store. You can only get these stickers uh, if you're part of the Patreon club, etc. There are many artists who are doing extremely well on Patreon. There are some that gets five figures or even six figures income every month. It's crazy. Not everyone on Patreon is going to get that kind of money, but that's what is possible. If Patreon or memberships in general is something that interests you, I also have a video about that. So I will link that also on the screen and in the description below. So there we go. These were my top 16 favorite ways to make money with art. And there are many, many others that I didn't even have time to touch on in this video. I hope that this gave you some ideas, but really what I would love for you to take away from this video is that there are so many different opportunities. So yes, it is difficult, but we are all different artists and there is somewhere a place for you. There's a place for all of us. With so many opportunities nowadays, I truly believe that it only takes some business strategy, some planning and persistence to make it happen for yourself. There has to be at least one or maybe even several of these methods that we talked about today that could be a great fit for you. So anyway, that's it for me today. I hope that it was helpful. If you enjoyed the video, leave us a like, comment, subscribe to help our small channel grow. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.